Hi, everyone. I'm Stephen W. Long. This is The Writing Life. And uh, uh, I was thinking I have the opportunity to talk to really a variety of writers or writers in, in different medium, uh, media, medium, always one, mm -hmm. uh, uh, including I, I had the privilege of talking to a fellow who is a songwriter, uh, normally fiction or, or memoirist. But uh, today we get to talk to Phil Gutso uh, about screenwriting, which I think is it, it's its own thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, Phil, before we get too deep into it, uh, What's a little bit of your background? I, I know that I, uh -huh. I know some of this, but. Um, well, where should I start? Uh, let's see. I've been writing scripts and stories for as long as I can remember. Um, went to uh, college, studied broadcasting, because that was the closest thing to filmmaking right. I could find at the, the university in Wyoming. Um, <coughs> I. Uh, uh, then started um, uh, film school at Humboldt State. I uh, um, then from there, uh, I did my own independent feature uh, as my graduate thesis. Uh, I've written uh, a number of screenplays. None of them I have done anything with, but um, a lot of them were written because the idea that I was going to shoot them uh, and make them. Um, then moved to Portland in the in the mid '90s. Worked for Will Vinton Studios, kind of at their heyday. And, and what do, what do they do? They do animation. If you right. remember the the California Raisins right. and the Noid, that <laughs> okay. was kind of their claim to fame. And, okay. and then they they did all the M and M's ads for quite a while. Sure. Which they just retired um, the character M and M's characters, oh, I believe. Okay. Um, and then uh, yeah. Just kind of had my fingers in screenwriting and filmmaking, and made a bunch of short films. Uh, and now I'm at, at my position at MCM. I'm kind of involved with a film club here, and then other independent filmmakers that kind of come and go and kind of mm -hmm. circle around um, the community. So yeah, I've been involved in filmmaking in one form or another for a really long time. Okay, and and I want to get into that more, but just before we mm -hmm. do, here at MCM, you there's a technical aspect to your, yes. your work, and I think you're kind of the, the go-to guy, or certainly one of them. I'm for, one of the go-to guys. Yeah. There's not that many go-to guys here. <laughs> this is a very small staff, but yeah, we all have to kind of be tech tech savvy in order to like. Uh, keep everything running and the lights on and, sure. and all that. So, okay. Yeah. So then back to the the uh, I think you said the film club. Mm -hmm. I know that you've been instrumental in that. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that club? Yeah, that was started because I wanted. Um, I, I originally started it. Uh, Kyle came on board later. Uh, he's the other person here at MCM, and and Caroline, another MCM volunteer producer, kind of all were instrumental in getting that rolling. Um, it's been a lot of fun. We basically will take, um, ori originally it started out as a good chunk of the year was done in a kind of a screenplay workshop format where we would oh, okay. bring short films and workshop them as a group. Critique. And critique yeah. and then, you know, everybody would say, have their thoughts and we'd bring them back and see how progress has been made. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's been, um, it's been it's been a lot of fun, and oftentimes out of that came a final script that we would then uh, produce right. as a club. And a lot of times we would uh, the goal would be to get it into the uh, short film festival here in town, right? Um, which has grown. Which that, has grown. That's really yes. gotten to be something. Um, the film club itself now is we're changing a little bit of direction, and so we decided to take the screenplay component out of it. And make it its own thing, right? And that's what the, the and workshop. And is that this? That's that. Okay, yeah. If I can, I don't know if they show. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. We'll get there. It is. We'll get that up there. <laughs> yeah, and um, I draw a lot on my uh, education and experience as a filmmaker. I've had uh, a number of filmmaking classes from uh, Cynthia Whitcomb up in Portland, and she, back in the 90s and 2000s, was a very prolific 
television screenwriter. Okay. And so she taught courses on feature film screenwriting. Really? Um, and, yeah. And I only say really because they seem like two different things. Which? Uh, to, to television and feature films. Um, well, they're not, I mean, there are, there's some minor differences. Like okay. in television, you have to, it's more of a, uh, a structure of like you have to build up to the commercial break and then right. and then you keep building up little well, mini now, and climaxes. obviously that's pre-streaming because pre -streaming. it depends on what it is it doesn't have commercials yeah and um, whereas a feature film is more of a linear build kind of a, a little bit more maybe quite not quite as few because you don't have to worry about uh, commercial breaks so you can kind of go more organically yeah um, whereas um, the scripts, uh, the, the 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 television scripts, like I said, have to be with, keep an eye on the commercial breaks. Right. And so you have, and and you want people to stay through the commercial break. So you kind of have to have a little bit of a climax before each right. commercial break. So in. Um, but overall, you'll have the kind of the basic same kind of structure. Okay. Of okay. the screenplay. I was going to say uh, the. This may only be. This is the tool in my toolbox. So that's what I. I'm talking about, but <clears throat> it's, it strikes me as sort of the difference between a short story and a novel, to, yeah, to some extent. Yeah, to some extent. And building up to a commercial reminds me of the dramatic question. So mm -hmm. when you're writing literature, that's what pulls a, a reader through is the dramatic question. That's what you're building up to pre-commercial. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of, in a way. Um, so yeah. What, in other words, what happens next? What happens next? Yeah. So, um, uh, the other side of things I pull from is I've gone through the UCLA screenwriting program, the online version, and they are really about character and story driven. Um, that the the character of your character is what propels the story forward, as opposed to plot. As opposed to just plot. Yeah. Um, so there's different ways of approaching screenplays, and then yet again, when you shrink it down to a short film, um, it still has to have a structure to it. Right. And um, I do think <coughs> character uh, can drive the screenplay quite a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's just a different form unto itself. It's a little bit more of a. a Oftentimes, screen short films, like your short story analogy, mm -hmm. will have a little bit of a twist. Sure. Um, at the end, we'll um, like oh, no, o Henry style <coughs> twist. Right. Oftentimes, my uh, Elizabeth George, who was my primary writing teacher, said, "You at the end of the novel or the movie or whatever. Uh, in fact, uh, when you look back from that point, it should be inevitable. Yeah. Even even if you're surprised." At that point, you should say, oh, of course. Yeah. And she calls it the refrigerator test. And the refrigerator test is you watch the movie, you get in your car, you come home, and you don't notice the gap or the glitch or the, the, the question until you're at the refrigerator getting a glass of milk, and you go, oh, how come they did that? Right. <laughs> but if you pass the refrigerator <laughs> test, you're OK. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and it's interesting you bring up short stories versus novels, the, the comparison I've heard from screenplay writing is talks about full-length screenplays to novel writing is full-length screenplays is kind of like, you, like you're taking a trip and you map out all your destinations and uh -huh. you map out the entire trip all the way mm -hmm. before you even start on the journey, whereas okay. novel writing is kind of like driving across country in the dark with your headlights on. You can see that far. You can see that far, <laughs> yeah, right. but you kind of, as you go through, as you move forward, you can only see so much right. ahead. I, as you I go. think it was E.L. Doctorow who yes, said that. Yes, it was E.L. Doctorow who yeah. said that. The yeah, I remember that. Um, that's right. Because my screenplay uh, a teacher had quoted him on that because she was now, writing a novel. Again, this interests me so yeah. much. Uh, you, I think we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> for a, a literary analogy, um, it, in terms of character driven. Uh -huh. So when you're writing literature, you need to have you need to develop the character, right. which is preliminary. You do all of that before you actually start writing. Is is it the same in this, or do, does it evolve organically, or how do um, you do that? 
Well, it depends. You oftentimes, um, I think it's a little bit more, you kind of have to have a, a more firmer picture of your character in mind before you start the screenplay. Um, but there is a lot of development that comes along as you are writing. Certainly your first you, draft. You learn screenplay. things. You learn things. And um, I've heard this analogy also before from other writers, and I don't think it's uncommon, is that when you finally get yourself into the world of your story, it's almost like you're just dictating right. what's happening right. rather than creating stuff. And yep. that's the same with screenplays. Yep. Um, it's just, uh, I, I guess the biggest difference is screenplays is, is really dialogue driven. Of course. Dialogue and action driven. Mm -hmm. um, there, and that's not necessarily fair to say because a good actor will bring that subtext into a role um, that you would, you would hear as a reader in a novel, you would hear the, their, their thoughts, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of story you're writing, of course. Point of view. Point of view. But you oftentimes hear the thoughts and the motivations, the internal workings right. of your character as the reader. Whereas a screenplay, the screenplay itself only has the dialogue and the action. Now, if you're clever as a screenwriter, you can convey what's going on without being too pedantic. But you want to leave a lot of that up to the actor's interpretation mm -hmm. of that internal, what's going on internally. I, I don't know. That's not my world. But I did hear an anecdote about uh, Richard Burton. Uh, who was in a play. This was not uh, a movie, but, but on stage. And he told one of the actors, tonight when I say the line, whatever it was, I'll make the people laugh. And he did. Mm -hmm. And the next night he, t he told the same fella, uh, tonight I'll say that line and make him cry. And he did. Right. <laughs> so, and you, yeah, can't, you can't really do that in, uh, in, in literature on the page. No, it's a lot more specific on the page. Mm -hmm. um, um, that's the other thing, too, in uh, thinking, speaking of crying and stuff, <clears throat> and I just saw a YouTube thing with Brian Cranston was talking about this exact same thing, is that in a film, if you want a sad scene and the actor is sad, um, your character can't cry on screen because somehow it takes the energy out. That is so it's, interesting. And that if you want your audience to really feel the emotion, the character shouldn't cry. Right. Whereas then the audience will do the crying. Then they have to participate. Right. Then the audience yeah. is drawn in more. So it's, you know, the, the, the person would be holding back tears or whatever. Sure. And I think there's an element, probably in any of the, maybe even fine art, but uh, to put yourself in that place. What would I do? Right. What would I feel? Uh, oh, I wouldn't pick up the trash can. I would walk out the door. Or, right. Yeah. Uh, but at that point, you're engaged. I guess that's the thing. Yeah. To, yeah, the audience is engaged. And, and um, uh, that's a famous uh, experiment during the silent era where um, when they were just learning all the film, all the film language, mm. where they would... The one, I can't remember who the filmmaker was, but they, they shot a, a, just a picture of a woman just looking blankly. Mm -hmm. And then they would juxtapose it with ver various scenes, of very, like a very sad scene or a very happy scene. And the audience's response was like, wow, what an amazing actress. She could respond so subtly to these different, okay. different scenes, and she wasn't responding at all, actually. So the audience does definitely bring That's a lot into it. So yeah. To bring it back to screenwriting, that is the challenge of a screenplay is to be, it's, it's, it's a little bit like writing poetry in that you are picking the right words to kind of emote these feelings without saying, he looks sad. Sure, you know? sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know? Well, that's the old show, don't tell. Right. You got a yeah. show and it's really apparent. It's really stripped bare in screenplay writing uh -huh. um, that you can, you know. That, that, that's really important. Now there are also, though, uh, uh, I think this is right, stage directions. That, so this, and that would help some. That actually is left up to the director. 
Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's not, it's in not the, like a play. It's not in the script. Uh, right. a, a script, a play script, the uh, the author will put in screen the, the stage directions on what happens where and how. Exterior, and ex night. Well, that's that's something a little separate. Okay. Um, so, like on on in stage, you know, it's like he picks up the phone, he holds it, he does this, that, that, and the 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 playwright is kind of the the god of the play, whereas okay. the director is trying to translate the playwright's vision okay. onto the stage. Whereas in the screenplay, screenplay is more seen as a blueprint, and that that there's several different stages of screenplays. The first stage is for the writer, and then the, when they write it the way they want it and how it makes sense to them. And then you would probably do another draft that would be for that would be make it more readable. So maybe oh, you'd have okay. more descriptive prose in it if you, were, but you don't want too much, of course, and yeah. it gets bogged down. Um, so that the person reading it gets a really good feel for what's going on and mm -hmm. how it happens. And then one of the later stages is is the uh, shooting script, and that's where the director comes in oh. and adds in stage directions and camera directions. Okay. And stuff. It's actually a no-no to put camera directions in your screenplay. Well, I just like learned something. I didn't or, know that. Yeah. I thought you wrote a script and, th and that was the script. No, there's okay. several directions. But a clever screenplay writer can emote a feeling of, oh, that's a close-up. That's obviously a close-up. Like, you can put, you know, interior hands-on typewriter. You know, okay. Okay. Uh, his face is, is, is contorted as he, as he, you know, and then behind him, you, you kind of like go, you can kind of, describe things in this little window and then maybe this little window and then you can describe things in a much larger scene and that kind of gives the impression okay. that and the way you can bounce back and forth between that like you can say he's in a you know eventually he's in a large room with a, a picture window overlooking a, a beautiful beautiful sunset and then you go hands you know in mm -hmm, bold mm -hmm. writing on the typewriter mm -hmm. you know so the way you structure it can actually um, Give the impression, direct, direct yeah. the direct the mind's eye, sure, sure. Uh, without saying close up hands. I, uh, in one of my writing classes, we had a guest speaker, <clears throat> and the fellow's name was Creighton Barnes, mm -hmm. and he was a screenwriter. Yeah, and in fact, he was the fellow who brought the Smurfs to the screen. <laughs> one of his <laughs> right. but he told us he's, because we were all fiction, short story yeah. or, or novel, and he said the difference is. If I have somebody at the window, <clears throat> and and then I, uh, they need to be then in the kitchen. Yeah, they're at the window, and then they're in the kitchen. Right. You have to have them at the window, and then they have to walk. <laughs> they have to do something <laughs> to get to the kitchen. Right. In the, yeah. in the novel, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. In, in a novel, you have to. Uh, follow the trail a lot more sure whereas yeah in a screenplay you can you can just the audience will hop between things in fact that's a sign of an of a more amateur screenplay is when the person says they get out of the car they shut the door they oh, go okay. up the stairs oh, they okay. open the door they go in the house <clears throat> it's just like yeah. um, in a in a movie if you think about it like one minute they're talking in the car yeah, and they you see them maybe open the door to get out or reach for the handle or reach for the yeah, handle even right. the next minute they're in the kitchen right. discussing and so you you kind of logically make this leap that of course they got out of the car yeah. that's all in your head and you know, you know you, it's interesting that uh, obviously movies have had an evolution yeah. like everything does and I wonder back at the beginning if they did that? Do you know? And yeah, I think they they, okay, so they, they had a little bit more. Um, there was a lot more of that f feeling like they had to f follow the person the whole right. way or see the action yeah. happening. Otherwise, audiences wouldn't make the connection. And maybe early on they wouldn't have. It would have been confusing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but audiences are very sophisticated these days as far as visual communication. Well, goes. in that I was. <clears throat> That's what I was thinking was that, that uh, literature has changed in the sense that in the late 1800s, it was mostly narration, uh, mm -hmm. Dickens. Yeah. Know. Now we write more in scenes because of cinema. 
Yeah. Because that's how we get it. Yeah, and a lot of contemporary novels will make those jumps, certainly between chapters. Um, right. You'll jump from a chapter in one location to someplace completely different with different characters in the next chapter. Um, Michael Crichton, I've noticed, does that a lot, where you'll mm -hmm. have one character in one scene that they're talking, and then boom, you're in you know, Abu Dhabi um, lurking, looking for a diamond. I don't know that next. this is the same, but uh, uh, sometimes a great notion, Ken Kesey's mm -hmm. work, in a paragraph, There'll be three, I mean, there could be three point of view characters in a paragraph. Mm, mm -hmm. And the reader knows because this one is in regular type, this oh, one's in italics, and this one's in parentheses. Yeah. But with, I mean, it's, you know. So there's visual cues even yeah, in novels yeah, to kind yeah. of cue you and, and guide you to what? And, uh, and, and I don't recall being lost, mm -hmm. uh, different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My, my thing is a, a lot of that stuff sometimes will take you out of the story. Um, same with uh, uh, various uh, non sequiturs maybe in a film or something. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, again, in, in literature, um, I've heard the, the criticism, your research is showing. Mm, and yes. so, and I th it takes you out because now you're paying attention to, oh, that's an interesting fact. Right. Not exactly sure what it has to do. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, so you, you think the fast cuts maybe? Uh, or or just that they're not logical? Just not logical. Yeah. Uh, sometimes fast cutting. Sometimes, yeah, if, sometimes if there's a jarring cut, um, it will take you out of the story. Sometimes the screen, the, the filmmaker wants to take you out of the story and make you aware that you're watching a story. Ah. Like all the, the French New Wave, um, that was kind of the idea behind that, was that the, uh, the which, is, which is the auteur school of filmmaking kind of came out of this idea that the director is God. And basically they would, the French did the, the things like jump cuts and all of that sort of thing because it, it reminded the audience of, you're watching this film that I made. Interesting. That you're watching a fictional thing. So they would do, that's where all the French New Wave stuff came from. Huh. Um, all the, yeah, like the jump cuts, the, the sound sometimes would be used really specifically. Oh, um, all to kind of make you aware that you're watching this piece that was created by somebody, not not to be totally you know what that reminds it. me of I think it's called the fourth wall yeah that you know the, the actors will be doing their thing and then one of them will have a, a an internal reaction and they'll look at the audience and go you know roll their right. eyes <laughs> and so now you know well I, they're they're not trying to fool me right I'm in on it right yeah yeah that the the that can be a lot of fun I love yeah. films that do that yeah um, uh, Woody Allen. <laughs> Woody Allen. I think Alfie was uh, one oh, that was did it? that all the I time. Don't remember that. Yeah, um, but uh, uh, um, well, Phil, before we get yeah, too yeah. far down and run out of time here, let's to to be specific about your class. Yes, it's going to be here. It's going to be here at MCM TV. Um, it's uh, it's twenty five dollars to MCM TV uh, just to cover extra time for staff mm -hmm. um, it's a fi it's a five week it's a five session screenwriting short screenwriting workshop starting on May Friday May 5th I believe oh boy and it'll okay. be every other week um, every other Friday every other Friday uh, from what does it say seven to or uh, six, six to eight six to eight so yeah. two hours we'll get together the first class will probably be breaking down uh, more of a, a structure, come up with some log lines. We'll watch some, some, uh, some really good short films um, that are good examples. And then we'll go from there and start writing the scripts. I'll, I'll, I have a way of we can outline the script um, using note cards, which is a very okay. um, nice, uh, I, I find it a really useful way to do uh, a screenplay breakdown. I've used it for feature films um, and I use it at times for short films too. Okay. Although short films are a little easier, sometimes they come into your head fully formed and you can just okay. kind of uh, lay them out. Um, but yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, 
it's, it's it I, sounds, love, I love talking about scripts and I love talking to people about yeah. scripts. I, and I, you sort of hit on this earlier, but I remember I watched a, a movie, it was, uh, I think it was on television, uh, and it shouldn't have even been that. But in the beginning, there, the, the protagonist <clears throat> is at the end of the bar, it's a young lady, mm -hmm. and, then there, and, and she's a, a cop. And there's two seasoned cops at the other end of the bar. And they look down at her and say, well, Bob, you know, Susie, the reason that she's so dogged in pursuing these people is because her father was an officer and he was shot in the line of duty. And now she, you know, and so there all the exposition, all the backstory. Right. In, and a, come on, that's the best you can do. <laughs> Don't let him do that. <laughs> right. The exposition. Yeah, you can. Uh, um well, the, one of the ways to hide that is to have something really unusual or extraordinary going on, some action happening on screen sure. while the person is relaying dialogue, something that's so fascinating that you forget you're getting a, a download yeah. of exposition. Yeah. So, because sometimes it's hard to avoid to move yeah. to the next. Yeah. But yeah. One, one of my teachers called it a fad. T H A D. Thad. Thad. Talking head avoidance device. <laughs> talking head avoidance device. <laughs> so exactly. There, so that you know you're engaged. In, you're still in the story. You're yeah. getting the information, but you're still engaged. Right. In the story. Right. You're still engaged in the story. Yeah. So. Oh, this sounds terrific. Yeah. Uh, what kind of capacity uh, can you do? Five people. 100? Five. I think, uh, but not a hundred. Hundred is too many. Five is is. We could probably we could probably do it with five. Um, oftentimes, you know, five to ten people is a really good number. That sounds good, yeah. You know, and it gives enough people to have one. Part of what we do is we will take the script and we will cast it amongst the, the people there, and then everybody read. We read it out loud. How fun! Because the it's really useful for the writer to hear their dialogue and everything read out loud. You bet. Um, and so that's kind of uh, part of the what we do. Um, so if there's enough people, then you can have different people yeah. reading different roles and yeah. not the same person is always like, you know, if you have one woman in class, they always get the female roles and oh, sure. um, <laughs> to, to read. So it's and, nice to have a variety. Yeah, the dialogue reminds me, again, from my education, uh, the dialogue is not natural speech. It gives the illusion of natural speech. Right, yeah. natural speech. It, well, there are some filmmakers that do do natural speech, and we could go on and on. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's but it's very stylistic. Yeah. It feels very odd when natural speech is used on sure. on screen, and so it's a lot more stylized. We're not that articulate. Sometimes. No, <laughs> and or clever. We're not that clever. <laughs> not that clever, you know. Yeah. Oh so. my goodness, uh, this sounds just so much fun. And just to kind of clarify. A twenty-five dollar registration fee. Yeah, and they can come but, down here to the station and. But pay there's that. five classes. Five classes. And that covers everything. That covers everything. Good yeah. Good grief. So. I should come just because it's so inexpensive. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it's uh, community media. The uh, benefits of community media. That, that's for sure. No, this is a this is a great place. Yeah. Um, we could go on and on. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you want to add? And can they look this up online or? Um, it, I think it's on our website. It's um, on Facebook, and they can always uh, drop me a line at info at mcm11.org. Okay. Um, ask me any questions there. or come on down to the station. And yeah, on screen has all the yeah. pertinent info. Great. Um, but yeah, they could come on down to the station and talk to me or Kyle. Yeah. Um, we both uh, have a hand in this. So. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good guys. So, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, thank you. And, and it really it just sounds like so much fun. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun. Okay. A lot of fun. All right. So, well, folks, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, really, uh, if you have any interest at all, come on down and sign up for this. It's just going to be a, a ball. And uh, we'll see you next time on The Writing Life. Take care. Bye.